All right, I'm here making some green sand today. I'm using the Lane Mountain Company number 70 sand. This sand is a fine silicate sand. You can kind of see the grit here. It's very fine. I've already added a little bit of bentonite, but I'm getting ready to do that, and I'll show you how to mix that in. And if I sound a little funny, it's because I'm wearing one of these to protect me from breathing in any of the sand or the bentonite. All that good safety first business. I've already spread the sand out. Now I'm just going to lightly go over the top of the with the bit knife. I try to spread the bit knife as, as fine as possible, but then you just take the tarp. And start rolling the bit knife in to mix it. It's, Probably be a lot easier in a cement mixer, but this is what I got. So here we go. I mix the bentonite in until I get a nice even color. Now it's almost time for adding the water. I just need to spread this out. For adding the water, I'm going to use your standard little garden sprayer. This is a one gallon from the hardware store. And then we're just going to lay down a, a real fine mist. And then go through and mix it and mull it. And the mulling I'm going to do just by stepping on it. And I'll show you that in a minute. And now I'm just mixing the water in. And just keep working it through. Spread it out. Work it through. And I put in about a quarter of a gallon per mix. And then after that, I step on it, and this is the mulling that's kind of squishing everything in. So I'm not getting it overly wet. I'm just getting it to where it'll change colors. Periodically, when you're applying the water, you want to come in and squeeze it, and you'll see that it starts to form, but as soon as I touch it, it falls apart. You actually want it to fall, take and look like that, and then crack evenly, but this is still too dry. So I need to add a little bit more water. So we're going to spread it out again, add more water, and keep mixing. You can see now that it's forming good. And when I crack it, no little bits fall off the inside. A little bit there, but part of that's my packing. But So all in all, it took about a gallon and a quarter of water. 100 pounds of white silica sand and about 12 pounds of bentonite clay. All right, now I'm done with the sand. I got it in my bucket over here. And now I have the part that I'm going to cast. And I'm going to use just standard baby powder as a parting agent. Real loose over there. I know there's better products out there than baby powder for this, but it's super cheap and easy. Now I'm just going to take sand, put it in, and and I pack it down as I go, I add a little bit, pack some more, add a little bit, pack some more. I'm just using a rubber mallet because that was handy. You could use this a 2x4 or a 2x2 two two or something like that. The, hand, the bottom of the handle works really good for getting up close to the edge. Work the sand all the way out to the edge. Make sure everything's good and tight. Alright, and then once you have it a little proud, take it and just Smooth off the excess, that way it sits flat when you turn it over to cast and it doesn't bulge up. And then carefully lift it up and flip it over, you should have your part there. Then what you're going to want to do is, is loosen this up and a lot of times you can just gently knock it back and forth. 
Some people will put holes in the back so they can screw screws in here and lift it out. I didn't on this because I'm going to do an open pour. Probably should have. Anyway, from here you would take your either cope or drag. I never remember which one's which. And set it on top. Generally, I put in my, my riser in here. And then I can go and put in a vent over off the side. And you fill all that in with sand and pack it just the same and then pull it off, set this up carefully, and then pull your piece out. So once I've pulled the piece out, you can see that it's not releasing all the way from the lettering in here, and so I've left that. And so it's left part of the lettering. That means I'm gonna to have to go back and chase it, and that's, since it's an indent, I can do that. If it was raised, it would be a little more of a problem, but then it probably wouldn't have this this issue with it so we'll see how this goes well here's a shot of my foundry got aluminum in there getting ready to cook off or cooking off a lot of people get real crazy on their foundry builds and all this stuff this melts I probably burn a little bit more fuel just because the tops open But it works for me. The crucible is just quarter inch round pipe that I got from the scrap yard with a quarter inch plate welded on the bottom. And then you'll see the two nubs on the side, right about there, uh, are just some nuts that I welded on so I can have a pivot point to tilt the thing and pour. And then we come out to my torches, just teed off regular old propane tank. With the foundry up this high, it's a little bit harder to pull the dross off. But you can see the little bits in there. Skim the dross off. Should have a nice shiny surface in there for the most part. And I'm just about ready to pour. Some people put in flux like borax or stuff to degas it. There's not that much aluminum in there that I need to worry about that. So I'm going to turn the gas off. And then grab my handle, slide it over the T-nuts. And this I poured just a little more than I needed. Uh, one in part to make sure that I had enough, but I was planning on coming back and machining this anyway. The other is that the original was just a little too thin for my liking, so I wanted to thicken it up a little bit. So that won't be any real problem. Now I just have to wait for it to cool off enough to harden. Now as far as what's left in the crucible, there's a, probably about an inch in there, maybe a pound, two pounds of aluminum. Normally I would work out pouring it into say a muffin, uh, steel muffin tins or something like that so that it melts down easier. I plan on refiring here in a little bit as soon as I get this out and make another one. The melt took about 20 minutes to get it to where I could pour and it's been out for about five now and I can tap it and I can just feel that it's soft and when I, you can see just a little bit of dents on it. I'm going to let it go for a little bit longer. Here I have the two types of sand that I was using. This is the silica sand that you can see gets up a fairly smooth surface. Where this is your Home Depot like playground sand and it's very coarse. Here you can see what's almost the finished product. Really nice and smooth after it's been sanded and all that business. This is the one that I just did with the new silica sand that was the 70 bag, fairly smooth. And then you have this one that was the Home Depot style playground sand. And this one I actually used a lost foam casting, but it all looks like this regardless because of the grit of the sand. 
Well, there you go.